I just thought it might be worth uh, uh, saying a little bit about the first workshop, more than has been said before, because the inspiration uh, for that really was the workshops that Rob had organised, or the one he'd organised then on penicillium and aspergillus, which he was able to get funding from NATO for, which I, th I think was 83? 83. 83. And Ove Eriksson and myself had been working on the outline of the Ascomycetes and Systema Ascomycetum uh, from 1986. And uh, this seemed perhaps a good way to get many more people involved in the exercise. At that time, I was going to Paris a lot. I was uh, very involved with IUBS and uh, became their president. And so I had some discussions with uh, colleagues in uh, Paris, and particularly uh, Madame Lutri Galinou, Parguay Le Duc, Jeanne Fevre, and uh, Bellemé. And as a result of that, we put in an application from uh, my institute to NATO to fund this, which was successful. Jean Mouchaka was very helpful with the uh, local organization, and my uh, deputy director, Liz Aitchison, dealt with all the, the finances. Uh, quite an interesting aspect to this is that we uh, decided on a very good technique to get papers from people, in that they didn't get their travel expenses until they delivered their manuscripts. And people didn't think this was serious until they found they weren't getting the money. And so that uh, proceeded rather quickly. There were very big issues at the time. One of the largest ones was uh, properly integrating the lichenized uh, taxa, uh, which is now uh, very well accepted and well integrated. So I was very pleased to see that change. Uh, we're now in a very big new challenge in dealing, of course, with all the names with uh, uh, genera typified by type species with uh, asexual types, uh, which has also been proceeding uh, very satisfactorily, so it's a very good uh, opportunity to try and have some sort of synthesis again. So I'm very uh, appreciative of the fact that uh, CBS and, uh, have been taking the initiative in this and uh, Pedro and Rob have done so much to make this happen. Okay, so much for the, the background. If we go turn to the, uh, where we are now, of course, you'll realise that the idea of the links between stages is very old. The, one of the Talans, uh, in fact, first uh, published some illustrations in uh, 1852 of some, some links. And this is the real work that made people aware was their very careful observations in the uh, Carpologia in the 1860s. The idea of giving names uh, separately to things was really put on a, a large uh, scale by Foucault. Uh, in this assembly uh, mycologici, and uh, cases like this got into the textbooks uh, very easily. This is de Barry's textbook where he has different states for the uh, uh, stages of uh, uh, Aspergillus, in fact, uh, both together but with the different, different names. So this got in, embroiled into the code. Some people never believed it, and this was a classic statement uh, uh, by D D Raper, generic name Aspergillus should be used for all these fungi, whether or not an ascosporic stage is produced. So we get there eventually. <laughs> and before the Congress in uh, 2005 in Vienna, so something needed to be done. So one, one late night in Madrid, I typed some proposals which uh, were debated there and it led in Vienna to the setting up of a, a special committee. Those were the proposals from uh, that day. This followed on for things that uh, John Taylor and uh, uh, Don Reynolds had actually proposed in 1991 that hadn't actually got anywhere. These were discussed, of course, at the Congress. And what do you do when people don't agree? You have a committee. So a committee was set up uh, uh, then in 2005. And... Uh, <clears throat> People got impatient, things started to, to happen. Uh, Rob was very involved in this workshop that made some recommendations about what should be done. It was be became more and more appreciated uh, by the working community that now with molecular data, it was something of a nonsense to have different names for the same species. And uh, much needed to be done to see the best way ahead with this. But this, again, was a very important uh, initiative. And one of the conclusions from the discussion at that meeting was that single names would simplify things now that DNA features are available. 
Well, these congresses happen at long uh, intervals. We had some discussions at the uh, Mycological Congress in uh, 2010. And following on uh, from that, where there was quite a clear response from uh, questionnaires that we put out, that people wanted to, by and large, go for abandoning the old system. Uh, that we had the, the balance at that time. Well, we should. 51% felt it should continue. 66% uh, felt that they shouldn't go back to some minor changes that had been made in the, the Vienna Code. 73% were for going to one fungus, one name. 62% thought the procedure should be stopped for the future. And 74% uh, had this idea of maintaining an ability to t teleotypify names where you had a, an asexual uh, species, you found the sexual one, so you had a, a new type for that as well. So that's where we were then. And the 58% just delete the thing without uh, invalidating old names. Well, following on from that, the following April, there was a the very big meeting here, and not really planned from that, uh, but it was discussed in the meeting that there should be some statement from the, the meeting that was held. Uh, Keith produced a bit of a first draft, and we all played around with it and developed it, and ended up with this uh, famous document, or infamous document, however you like to... Uh, so term it, which had a very strong uh, support internationally and indicated a direction forward. These are some of the key issues from the key words that were uh, discussed in that uh, publication. And it covered more than just the one name, one fungus issue, uh, but a number of other aspects of concern. So uh, based on that, uh, various proposals went to the Botanical Congress at that summer in Australia and again, discussions and voting uh, took place. Various decisions were taken. There was a lot of rapid drafting and redrafting of proposals to see what would go through. Uh, and in fact, all the proposals that had come from the mycologists, apart from one, were accepted in some form. And that one was the one that related to the governance of the code, where, of course, you form a committee, which Tom is looking after, and which is proceeding. Anyway, following that, the editorial board uh, uh, for the code uh, meets and refines and discusses things and changes things around. Uh, so that's the meeting of that uh, group in the Natural History Museum uh, for following uh, January. And uh, we end up with the, the new code. Uh, but what, what happened in Melbourne was that the old system ended when the decisions of the Congress were ratified in, in July 2011. Uh, some grace was given until the beginning of 2013 for people that uh, did introduce two names for the same uh, taxon in that time. But for the, uh, July 2011 is when the new procedure clicked in, and that's often wrongly cited, so I thought I'd better stress that. Okay, so taking on Meredith's tombstone uh, idea that she used in her presidential address to the MSA, we have another tombstone now, which is for the end of dual nomenclature, which survived in the code almost for 100 years. And we can see the progress uh, of what's happening with these things through the meetings at CBS. Uh, we go from one fungus, which name, uh, to ones where we just, uh, really, we know what the names are on the mugs, as long as you don't spot the deliberate error. But there were well, some issues actually uh, uh, remained that, that did come out of the woodwork afterwards. Um, most of the things seem to work very well and it's actually been very impressive. Uh, I feel how quickly the community has adapted to this. There are a lot of discussions and concerns initially and quite rightly so, but as when we changed the starting point date for fungi back in uh, 1981, uh, there was actually rather little uh, impact uh, and controversy in practice as things were worked out. And it's been very pleasing to me to see how the different groups of mycologists have collaborated in different uh, orders and classes and genera in some cases to decide uh, which route to, to go to get to one name for one fungus. And when you consider the number of names involved, it's really very small indeed. Uh, there's, there's a, I'm not quite sure how many thousand generic names are affected, but most of the arguments uh, that 
I think the controversial ones, there's probably less than 100 altogether when you think about it. So they, some of those are very emotive, I agree, uh, but it's very satisfying, I think, that a lot of these things were dealt with. And there, there are a couple of issues that uh, came to light afterwards, and what, what this was uh, one of them, which uh, arose from a query that Wil Wilhelm ro uh, brought up initially, uh, because it was realised that the current rules meant that if somebody used the same epithet for a teleomorph, a typified, sexually typified thing, uh, that has already existed for an asexual morph, that, that may not mean that the earliest name in the t uh, sexually typified generic name uh, could be used. And this is best illustrated by uh, an example that was explaining the problem. It's where, it's where a new state was discovered and under the previous code, although you knew it was the same species, the code forced you to introduce a new name, uh, which is against the principles of the, the code, of course, because in theory, every species should have one name. And this was, it was considered a very good practice amongst mycologists to use the same uh, species epithets for these newly discovered uh, morphs, because that kept the link with the uh, older names that pathologists particularly were familiar with. But this does have some unfortunate consequences now. And so the solution that uh, was developed and was tried on different members of the editorial committee of the, the code uh, was that if in principle, if prior to 2013, when somebody named something and used the same, because they discovered a new state, then used the same epithet, that should be treated as a new combination. And there was a precedent for that already in the code because the reverse had been done uh, for the, that case for many, many years. So this was the, uh, the concept. It's probably best illustrated by an artificial fungus, so nobody ever gets uh, too upset about it. If we have perfecta fungus, Taylor I, A, <laughs> produced in 63, and it has a number of synonyms, uh, imperfecta fungus, Taylor I, which was obviously the uh, 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 asexually typified state that was uh, in use at the time, and there's a perfecta fungus, Rossmanii, and an impecta fungus, Crucii. And so what, what this means is under the current uh, rules, before Melbourne you had to use perfecta fungus, Taylori. Under the Mel Melbourne code, it would become imperfecta fungus, Crucii, because the earliest name at that time then is the uh, uh, D's name from 1925, and although the uh, bee's name is earlier, you can't recombine that into uh, perfecta fungus because it's preoccupied by the same name. So it was how we actually got around this. So the proposal was to uh, actually treat those situations as a new combination, which meant that you're back to perfecta fungus taylori and just have to make a small change in the uh, actual citation. Uh, Amy was asking how many cases there were yesterday, and uh, Vincent uh, Robert, in a, an amazing uh, uh, ability to sort out things in databases, has been very impressive. There are 5,285 records of asexual sexual connections in Microbank, and there are 1,116 that have this problem. The same epithet, 21%. And not all of them would result in name changes. It depends whether other synonyms uh, actually exist. But it's not an insignificant uh, problem. That's quite clear. Okay. Uh, oh, this was the example that was in the code uh, before. That was published as a, a new combination when it was discovered, uh, a sexual stage was discovered. <coughs> it's typified by the uh, asexual more from pre-Melbourne it was decided in the code that shouldn't be treated as a new combination, it should be treated as a new species, uh, despite what the author had actually intended. And post-Melbourne, that you would just reinstate uh, what who had had in the first place. So that, that's how uh, that, that would work. Uh, this is the case that prompted the situation, which is quite interesting, because when uh, Dade introduced this name uh, for the sexual stage, he didn't like to put new species or new combinations at all. 
He actually avoided putting new species after his scientific name because he obviously didn't like to do this under the, under the uh, rules. Uh, but in this case, it meant that we'd have to change the name of this well-known species uh, because there was <coughs> well, it's only a, a typified name available. And so all one has to do, again, in this, this case, is you end up with changing the uh, author citations. Uh, if you don't follow this route, it means you have to take up this old name, Stilvocalera dimorpha, that's the first name for the species. Well, we can deal with all these things one by one with conservation, but it takes so much time. I've been involved in writing quite a lot of conservation proposals recently, and I can sure, assure you it's not something you really want to get into. And apart from taking it a, a long time, um, it means that you have a period where you, you, you're not sure what you should do, and obviously people want to get their work published and tidied up. So if we can have an automatic system to clear up this mess for from the past the better, and this is something that could be done actually in the databases uh, electronically, it needn't be a big deal as long as it's authorised in the code. Uh, I f in fact, there are a number of other cases that I, I looked at. Uh, Amy said, how many of these are there? And I spent an hour or so just looking around in books that I'd got and found about 11. Amy said, in some of those, there's no need actually to, uh, to invoke this, this rule. These were just random ones. This was one where you'd have to use this name, Fusicladium uh, uh, pruni, for that uh, Venturia, for example. This, this was one which is a very familiar fungus where uh, we go, we'd have to go right, initially we go right back to Linnaeus uh, for this. And when uh, Bhutan was introducing this name, I actually suggested he use Rugosa in the hope that we would keep that if it was found to be sexual, because the type is actually questionable whether it has assay in it or, or not. Um, but this would mean, in the, th this case, that we'd have to change it into Virginia because there's a Pasoon name, uh, and which would, of course, be very unfortunate. This is an another one which uh, Amy says should be in a different genus now, but in that case, uh, it would have to be... Uh, as we just change, sorry, we just have to change the author citation in that one. There are probably lots of cases in the Rust. This is probably one of the biggest areas uh, where there are problems. Uh, where things that were in, uh, described as, as uridos and so on uh, have sexual stages discovered in things like coccinia. Uh, anyway, this was the proposal that was made after discussions with uh, many people involved in, in the code and the flowering plant people as well. And it was felt that this, because of, uh, that there wasn't really an, an intent to introduce a new uh, species, people knew they were describing the state of the same species, uh, that this... Uh, it was a very sensible approach to adopt. In fact, there were five members of the editorial committee of the code that were very happy about that way ahead. So that's where we are with that. Uh, before the uh, Congress <coughs> in uh, uh, Bangkok, I tried to pull together various outstanding bits. And uh, apart from that one, there wasn't anything that was really very uh, controversial. This was, you remember, when I talked about it here last year, it was published on the 1st of April to be taken with a pinch of salt and so on, and uh, to see how things went. And in, in Bangkok, we had very valuable discussions. Some of them uh, uh, couldn't have been as long as would have been ideal, um, which Scott kindly took the chair for. And as uh, re a result of that, a report was made, including the questionnaire that everybody had and also uh, the discussions in the meetings. And uh, <coughs> there was one issue that had been a bit controversial before was whether priority should continue for uh, sexual names when you're making a choice, because the code that was adopted in Melbourne meant you had to go through really an elaborate procedure uh, if you actually wanted to take up an asexually typified name in preference to a sexually typified one if the fungus was regarded as well known, which of course nobody could define. And uh, so that, that was the current rule uh, for that. But there was no penalty for not doing this. And I think Gary Samuels is the only person that's trying to follow this obscure route, because you have to propose for conservation the name you don't want, then wait till the committee has rejected that before you can use the name that you do want. I mean, it's a bizarre procedure. but. Uh, 
that's, that's what the Congresses do. <laughs> so anyway, at, at the Congress, the voting on this was really overwhelming. 93% of those that actually uh, responded to that were in favour of just getting rid of it totally, not even having it as a recommendation. So I think that that's quite clear, and I can't see there's any, uh, any problems uh, with that. Um, uh, to, to do with the issue I was talking about, using the, uh, the, the special case where, where people have used the same species epicet for different moths, again, uh, almost 87% of the people responding said we should go that route. And so obviously this is something that uh, has to be followed up. And these proposals all have to now be taken to the uh, Con Congress in uh, China. Uh, we're instructed by the International Mycological Association's uh, General Assembly at the end of the Congress to do that, so there's no question that we have to do that as a community. And uh, I suggested this was best done but through uh, the auspices of the ICTF, so they could also look at it and indicate uh, uh, whether there are any proposals there that they didn't like, and so on. And we could include their voting as well in the document that would then go to the Manchester Committee for Fungi. Uh, one thing that is going on behind this, just to keep you aware, uh, there is the issue of whether uh, names should be uh, protected against unlisted as well as listed names. The only way we're actually going to get a comprehensive, stable generic list, I think, is having a huge list of protected names. And we, uh, th this document was revised before the Congress in Bangkok, although not many people seem to have realised that and are still working with a printed copy. Uh, but there is the updated version of that available, and that pr process will continue. Uh, it will work go, go slightly behind the other lists that are being produced uh, with a view to actually uh, having some rather comprehensive thing that does cover cases where uh, and there are not working groups and so on available, and also will safeguard all sorts of names when we don't know what's hiding uh, in the woodwork. And having had to write proposals for some of these recently, that have come out of the woodwork, I think it's very uh, good that we have this blanket protection. So that procedure will continue, and a new re revision of that will be uh, prepared in due course. So uh, our feeling is that we should still go on. Uh, uh, there was an issue of whether the cut-off date for names that should be in these lists should be at the end of the, the century or uh, the beginning of 2012. Uh, so that's still a bit uh, up for discussion. Uh, Walter Gams, I know, was very keen on the, at the end of 2012, uh, for example. But I don't think we should include all up-to-date modern names because it doesn't uh, really give people uh, motivation to properly look into the history then and investigate the nomenclature of the things they're dealing with. So I think that's really uh, where, where we are. My main concern is if we don't get something fairly substantial done through in uh, 2017. We may have to wait till 2023, which seems an awful long way ahead, uh, particularly if we don't get this uh, authority moved entirely to the Mycological Congress, in which case, of course, we could do that in 2018, which I, of course, hope we, hope we will. So really, that, that's where we are. I liaised a bit with Tom about what we covered in uh, uh, th these pair of talks, so uh, certain things I've not covered and he will pick up. I thought I'd try and leave a few minutes anyway for questions on, on this topic. So thank you very much. <laughs>